For Durban book lovers, this unassuming corner shop in Greville is something of a hidden gem. And not merely because of its vast stock of out-of-print, rare and collectible volumes, it's also a place where new scholarship comes to light. And in this case, the topic is an iconic figure in South African history. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was 24 years old when he arrived in South Africa in 1893, accompanied by his wife and children. Having trained in London, he came to this country with the intention of establishing a legal practice. Encountering the inevitable racial discrimination of the era, he soon came into conflict with the authorities. It is this chapter in the future Mahatma's life that intrigued historians Ashwin Desai and Gulam Vaid. Well, we've uh, you know, been interested in Gandhi for a long time. We did a book on indentured labor, and this was sort of uh, you know, dealing with the passenger Indians. So it was the other half of the same, a similar period and same story. But it also started in part with the 1913 strike. Initially, we started you know, wanting to focus on the strike, but gradually over a period of time, as we began reading the original sources, the form and the shape of the book itself, uh, went in a very different direction. Well, one of the difficulties was that we started out to write a book about Gandhi, a person we grew up with, in the sense that our mothers and fathers and our grandfathers told us stories about Gandhi. And for me, growing up, I had two heroes, Mahatma Gandhi and John Wayne. And as we started to write the book, though, and started to uncover what Gandhi was really like in South Africa, the positions he took, the inconsistencies between the perceived image of Gandhi uh, and what he was really like, um, it started to worry us because nobody likes the heroes to be seen to have clay feet. By and large, you know, the overriding tropes about Gandhi's South African years remain firmly uh, entrenched in people's ideas. It's a challenge for the contemporary reader to see the world through the eyes of someone living in the British Empire, and the book sets out to make this clearer. While being objectively critical, the authors have also tried to establish the context in which Gandhi thought and acted at the time. You've got to understand Gandhi in the broader, wider canvas of the making of the modern South Africa as it's come to be known. And that's how we try to write Gandhi. Not as some isolated individual, some man who arrives as some form of immaculate conception, who arrives here, suddenly has this vision, a Damascus turn from being an English barrister and a lawyer to become this great Mahatma. We understand him as a real living human being trying to negotiate his life and a community's life in a very, very difficult and brutal system that was unfolding. Was he a racist in the way he conducted himself in South Africa? In the sense that, did he make common cause with the most oppressed, the most subjugated, the most exploited of South Africans at the time, which were African people? No, he didn't. What he tried to do was to ally himself with white minority power and hope that Indians will become junior partners in that enterprise. In tearing down our myths and our legends and challenging the belief systems that we've held for so long, we can actually start to engage with a dialogue of growth and actual reconciliation between race groups that, that isn't happening at this moment. I think that this book is providing a counter-narrative of Gandhi um, to provide uh, some complexity to his legacy and his and his name and I think I think it's necessary to humanize every um, kind of sainted uh, figure. Now we can make an objective analysis rather than giving us all these superheroes legends. It makes it hard for us to identify with them. I think it's so important for us to know our history. Uh, we have some good aspects in terms of our history and we have some bad aspects and that's what makes us um, South Africans. That's what makes uh, our South African culture so rich, so diverse. Well, I think the authors went through a great lens to capture the knowledge and truth about Gandhi versus obviously what we've been told previously. So I think that the knowledge and the factual abilities here really came out strong. So we have the history of race and racial thinking. But how do we then go beyond that to build a new world, a brave new world? This research is extremely important and I really look forward to reading the book. It teaches us today that we can't be caught up in our own racial blocks, only think about advancement of communities along racial lines, but look at society in its vastness of its human endeavor. And those who are suffering the most, those who are the most oppressed, are the ones we're supposed to identify with. Not because we have a racial identity of people, because we believe that the most oppressed 
I most need and that the most oppressed shall inherit the earth.